Our program here, we got Suns rookie Josh Jackson. He's going to join us live on set. Looking forward to that. And we're going to get into the Celtics Pistons trade. Avery Bradley going to Detroit. Marcus Morris coming back to the Boston. So we'll get into that. But let's start with some summer league highlights. It just makes sense. But all these crazy LA fans came down from LA for this place was rocking. First play of the game, Lonzo Ball's debut. He sets up Brandon Ingram. A gorgeous, gorgeous alley oop. And Brandon Ingram did his part in this game as oh, well. Woo. That was a no look pass from Ingram, showing the passing, Looking showing like a lot. Yeah. To Thomas Bryant right there. Bryce Johnson on the other side for the Clippers. That's a smooth one. Did a lot himself. Lonzo Ball hitting his only three pointer of the game. He's one for 11 from downtown. Bryce Johnson again. Is he going to play this year in the rotation for the Clips? Quite Whoa. possibly. He wow. had 23 going right by Lonzo Ball. But Brandon Ingram Whoa. was really the star of this game. He had 26 as we tick down in the fourth. He's got a chance to win it right here. It's all tied up at 87. Let's her rip. It's just off. He turns the ankle. He's uh -oh, down, uh -oh. and that's when President Magic Johnson said, no, nope. he's done. Shut Take it out. Nope. He's Shut not it playing Shut overtime. It's wrap. over. That's he wrap. called it. Brian Shaw loves that call right beside him. <laughs> and then Sidarius Thornwell, he finishes oh. it off for the Clips. A three-point win. Lonzo Ball's debut. Only five points on two of 15 shooting. But LeVar was happy. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> he's always, always happy. happy. He's always happy. He showed happy. some happy. things. Lonzo Ball definitely showed happy. some things out there. This today. place was packed. It oh, was. Yeah. Lakers, Bumps, that's man. not hyperbole. And, and we can get to Brandon Ingram here in a second. But what did you think of Lonzo Ball's debut? I mean, the one for 11 from three-point land is pretty rough. Not but great. overall, yeah. what stood out to you? you? Seeing him go one for 11, you wouldn't think that he shot 40% from three in college. Right, right. That shot will come, I suppose. But one thing that's definitely going to translate and translate it tonight is passing was there. The only problem was they didn't have to guard him from the three-point line, and he wasn't really getting in the paint a ton. Yeah, and that's going to be the key to Lonzo Ball actually being able to score in the league is if he's hitting the threes when they're stepping off, stepping back to him, that'll make it easier to get to the rim. It's the same sort of thing we saw with guys like Ricky Rubio where they're going to play off you to hit until you can show that you make the threes. And then once you make the threes, things are a little bit easier. But uh, you have to hope that he's a 40% shooter, maybe 35%. Can't be one for 11 for his whole career. <laughs> is the sky falling, Lee? Uh, in Lakeland. Do the Lakers have a bust in Lonzo Ball? <laughs> well, you, you might have thought that after the game here today, but look, Lakers fans haven't had a lot to cheer about lately. And Lonzo Ball coming in, he was a big name. The situation in LA was perfect. He's a big uh, LA guy. Now, the shot we talked about, that wasn't falling. That's fine. Guys like Chris Paul, Tony Parker, Derek Rose, they couldn't shoot either in their first couple of years. It takes time to work on it. But if you can pass the ball and you can play defense, you're going to get still sure. some time on the NBA floor. But no player, probably in summer league this year, certainly, is under more scrutiny anyway than Lonzo. A lot of that is to do with his dad. He brings a lot of attention to him and yeah. his family. He's going to have to get used to that. He's playing in L.A., so that's the right market for him. This wasn't his best game, but we'll forget about it and move on. Tough game from Lonzo Ball, but Brandon Ingram was phenomenal. Despite the twisted ankle, we may not even see him in the rest of summer league mm -hmm. because he played that well and he looked that much better than the competition out there. They may just shut him down for the rest of it. He looked great. But let's get to the Suns Kings. It just ended here, what, mere minutes ago. The four and five pick going at it. Darren Fox and Josh Jackson back and forth. This was fun. Jackson drives, flips in the reverse here, plus the foul. That's nice. This is pretty. This is pretty. Again, these fans in attendance were having a blast because these guys going back and forth. Darren Fox drives, sinks the floater, loses his shoe in the process there. Just like the pros. Just like the pros <laughs> yeah. do. Hey, you're a vet, kid. Second half, Josh Jackson driving down the lane for the finish. These two franchises, I'm sure, very happy with their four and five picks. Later in the third. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, that was nice. Pretty. That's pretty. Darren Fox hits the step back jumper. Do the Kings have a Woo! point guard of the future here? Quite possibly a beautiful lay-in, coast to coast. Shaking Derek Jones, he had 18 for the game. Fourth cue, Josh Jackson sinks the turnaround fade. Oh yeah. Well, we'll have to ask him about that. Coming on the show later. Let's ask him about this as well. Under two minutes left. Banks in the pull-up. 18 on the game. Suns win. Suns win the battle of the four and five again. Uh, Summer League is all about the kids. That Suns fan's happy. He can't see anything, but he's happy. <laughs> That's a grown man. But I, I, I want to get your, your thoughts on the Kings because, you know, you know, they have a very, very young roster, but they made some interesting moves here in the offseason. They brought in a lot of vets. George Hill, Zach Randolph, Vince Carter going there for a year. Do you think this is the right decision, or are there any worries that guys like Hill and Zach Randolph and Vince almost get in the way of some of the young guys playing, or is this just a solid veteran locker room sort of move 
where I you're think uh, it's incubating a, these That's onions. a definite locker room move. I personally think the kids should play, but the good thing about signing these veterans is they're not going to really put you over the top in the Western Conference, that it really jeopardizes getting another high draft pick for the Kings, which is what they are ultimately going to do. But like Lee's always said about the 76ers, you need some veteran mentors around to kind of teach you the ways of being in the NBA. So there's definitely value in that. It's being professional, you know, it's about the work ethic. It's not just about going out on the court and playing. It's understanding how to treat your body right, how to eat right, what it's like when you go on a big road trip, how to get through that, being away from your family and friends for a while. So Like us know, right now? Exactly, yeah. It's, <laughs> no, but it does take time. And, and George Hill, I mean, he's not that old. I mean, you're talking Zach and, and Vince right. Carter. They're the real old guys. George Hill still is actually trying to play and be a, an effective point guard in this league. So I think that's great for uh, Darren, Darren Fox coming through. I think they brought in the right veterans, guys that are professional players. No doubt. Those and, three. and like you said, they're not going to make these, make them a playoff team, which is a nice thing. And the young guys are still going to play. They have mm -hmm. nine guys under 23 or under. They're so wow. young, so they I mean, have to play because there's nine of them. Yeah. Right into the up-down report where the four of us figure out where we stand on some recent NBA news. And big news today, the Boston Celtics have agreed to send Avery Bradley and a 2019 second round pick to the Detroit Pistons for Marcus Morris. Bradley's entering the final season of his contract. Boston needed to clear some cap space to officially sign Gordon Hayward there to the max. Avery Bradley considered to be one of the best defenders in the league at that guard position. Are you guys up or down on the Celtics trading Avery Bradley? What do you think? Oh, it's a business, man. It's a business, That's man. That's the problem. That's the difficulty here because he is their, uh, one of their better defenders, but he is also their heartbeat. That being said, he's got the shortest contract mm -hmm. of those two, three, four players yep. that they, they play there. And they all do the same sort of things. You know, him and Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart and now Jason Tatum. Uh, there, there's a lot of them. And unfortunately, because his contract comes up at the end of the year, they weren't going to sign him long term. You're just because they have so many of them. Just it's, ju it's a numbers game for Avery Bradley in this situation. Plus, he's the shortest guy of all of them. And I think that plays a part because they're an undersized team. Why are you laughing? Well, he's a good rebounder, though. He's a better rebounder. He's a very good, Maybe they're he's a better rebounder. Good, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. your thumbs down? I, I'm thumbs down. I think I know that Danny Ainge didn't want to trade him first. He was trying to make other offers, and this one was the only one he could really make to create the cap space and, and, and uh, uh, enough room to sign Gordon Hayward. But it's going to be a big loss. He is an all-NBA defender. I know he didn't actually make it this year, yeah. but, and uh, players around the league... They went nuts. They went crazy. What so, are you doing with your thumb over there? Well, well, well yeah. you know, I'm down. Like, 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 yeah. There's a dangle yeah. thumb. Like a dangle <laughs> or something. Yeah. 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 Right. But, uh, now, no, you look, usually cover your look, face. Look, 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 Avery Bradley next year in Detroit. All-star. Whoa! There's spots. Whoa. There's spots in the Eastern That's Conference. That's the boldest declaration yeah. of summer That's league. A bold and listen, statement. he's gotten better every single year throughout his career. He's going into a contract year next year. He's playing in the East. I don't I'm mind it. it. I don't mind the call. All right, moving on here, guys. According to Woj, the restricted Hawks free agent Tim Hardaway Jr. has signed a four-year, seventy-one million dollar offer sheet with the Knicks. I have people laughing behind me at this news. Uh, the Knox, the Hawks now have a couple days here to match the offer, which contains a fifteen percent trade kicker and a player option in the fourth year. Tim Hardaway had a bit of a breakout season last year, but are you up or down on the Hawks matching the Knicks' Tim Hardaway offer sheet? Wow, this is Thumbs a tough one. Down. Just let talent go. Yeah, because Zach Lowe, you know, reportedly is saying the Hawks were maybe thinking like four years, $48 million. That's a pretty big gap. Yeah. $48 million to the $71 million that the Knicks are throwing at him. That's a huge gap considering the Hawks already have Kent Bazemore under contract for 17 a year and Dennis Schroeder for 15 and a half a year. Paying those three as your backcourt for the next three seasons, that's just not a wise allocation of resources. You don't want to give them up, but... You know, the, the Hawks have their own pick. They've got some more first-round picks. They've got first-round picks from last year who didn't get a ton of playing time. You can afford to lose them if it's going to cost this much. The market dictates your value, you know, and the Hawks thought he was only worth $50 million. The Knicks come in with $71 million, so I was like, hey, he is in demand. I liked him last year. I thought he played really well. Shot selection, still a little bit iffy at times. But look, he's got now, if he goes to New York, he gets an opportunity there to perform. If he stays in Atlanta, he's going to expect to get more minutes and more shots and continue to improve next season. Yeah, he can Tough get spot. buckets. I mean, he oh, heats he up quickly. Sure. This yeah. guy heats he can up be quickly. a Jamal Crawford well, just, for sure. Yeah. It, it's in the genes, you know. That was, <laughs> that was really good at getting buckets like that He was as well. streaky as well. You're absolutely for sure. right about that. But $71 million is just a little too much for your test. Yeah, when you add up Kent Bazemore, regardless of Dennis Schroeder, there's another a Miles Plumley that's making around $12 million. So what kind of team are you going to be if you sign Tim Hardaway yeah. for the next few years? A borderline playoff team, I suppose. Right. Why not be slightly worse? 
and possibly get a pick. It, it doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense. Yeah, the Hawks point. have already, you know, lost Paul Millsap mm -hmm. here in free agency. They traded uh, Dwight Howard. You know, they're worrying about putting in a courtside bar <laughs> and a barber shop <laughs> into the arena. You, right? you got to get our cuts. It's yeah. all distractions right now in Atlanta, I think, because I think it might be a rough year there That's a in lot Atlanta. Of bucks. It yeah. could be a lot of losses, absolutely. All right, final one here, guys. Some news out of Texas. Dirk Nowitzki and the Mavs hey, have agreed to a two-year, $10 million deal. That's it. Second year, the deal will be a team option for the Mavs. Now, the 39-year-old German averaged around 14 points and six and a half boards last season, so he's still got some game. But are you guys up or down on Dirk taking what is obviously here a massive discount, the Dirk discount for Mark Cuban and the Mavs? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs down. What's I'm going? okay with it. Too many Dirk discounts. The guy's given up so much money over his career, especially after the Mavericks won a title when theoretically maybe they were building. This year they're not building. Dirk could have got paid $25 million to pay next season. Mark Cuban would happily pay him $25 million next season just like he did this season. I just think Dirk should get every dollar that he's owed and every dollar that he wants. Maybe he only wants he the five. He doesn't want it. Yeah, but guess what? Give it to us then. We can split it four ways. That's five million apiece. Dirk gets five million. We're all living the life. So what are you saying? Like, you, you think that Dirk should get that Kobe-like yeah, sort I of do. legacy contract? If the, if the Mavericks really aren't going to be making waves in the league and it's going to be tough in the Western Conference, to me they could top out at maybe making the eighth seed, maybe stealing one game against whoever they play in the one seed. If they're not actually going to be building for a title, I don't see the point of him giving up money. You know why I'm okay with it? Because this means, even though it can't be part of the contract, the tampering rules and yada yada, I'm only paying you to play basketball. Right. This means that he is going to give him billions. He's going to give him lots of money <laughs> when he's retired. There's got to be some back Is he going to get paid every here. dollar he's given up? Because that would be $200 Times million. Times 10. Dollars. Well, I don't know. He could still but pay he's a billionaire. Are you yeah. saying $20 million is nothing to Mark Cuban, and he's going to help him out in his retirement. Retirement is hard for NBA players. He's going to give him something to do. He's going to have a job shark for tank. him. I was going to say, do they have a German shark tank? Uh, maybe they'll start I one. I thought you were like the super shark yeah, tank. Yeah, I am, I am. I just don't know too much about the No, they got dragons dead in Canada. Yeah. I don't know what they have in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Germany start that. Uh, maybe that's where the money will be recuperated. Yeah. All right, we got to take a break. When we come back, we're hoping Suns rookie Josh Jackson. Where you at, Josh? Where they live on set, looking forward to that. Starters live from Vegas Summer League. Welcome back to the Starters. Yeah, nice little zoom there on the number four pick from the 2017 draft. We are joined now by Suns rookie Josh Jackson. Josh, thanks for coming on, man. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Had a pretty good first game here at Summer League. 18 and 8. You picked up the win. How did it feel out there? Felt good. Uh, not going to lie, coming out in the beginning, uh, naturally, I was a little bit nervous. But as the game went on, I just had to realize it's just another game. Just, just basketball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. How excited are you with this very young Suns team heading into this season? You got some. That's some core pieces, it looks like here. I'm really excited, um, especially playing in Summer League with a uh, few guys who are actually going to be asked to play major minutes this year. That's why I think it's uh, just really important for us to come out and take this serious. Uh, actually, a lot more important than some other teams here because, you know, like I said, we are so young and we right. got so many guys who are going to play major minutes this year on the team. Fantastic. Well, when we, when we knew you were coming on tonight, we. We took to the internet to do a little bit of research. <laughs> we sometimes do that here oh, on the starters. Don't believe everything. You exactly. Do that. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem with the internet, which is why we're going to play a game called Fact Checking with uh. Josh Jackson. So we're going to throw some things at you that we've read or saw on the internet, and you can confirm whether they're a fact or whether okay. they're true, whether they're false. All right, first that. one Fact Checking with Josh Jackson. You're the best trash talker of your rookie class. Fact. <laughs> wow. That's a fact. You talk, some, you talk some junk out there. Here and there when I want to. Yeah? Yeah. Why do you do it? It gets you going? It, get, um, you like it try gets to get me going. Skin? I try to get under other players' skin, but mostly it gets me going. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Not any, anything personal? Have you ever gone too low where you're like, ooh, I shouldn't have said that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're an honest man. You're not honest. <laughs> All right, next one here. I mean, again, we saw this on the internet. You play a mean saxophone. I play a decent saxophone. A decent saxophone. A decent saxophone. Okay. How long have you been playing it? I've been playing it since I was in about the sixth grade. Uh, we actually had a, a band class that I was forced to be in. Uh, <laughs> but, sure. you know, I ended up liking it, and I played all the way up until, um, until I was in the eighth grade. Did you get to pick the instrument? Did the yeah. saxophone speak to you? Yeah, like just Kenny called G? my name. It did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. It was shaped like a J, so I picked it up. <laughs> oh, that's smart. <laughs> no, that's smart. Yeah. All right, next one here. 
You compare your game, your basketball game, to Kawhi Leonard. Is that a, is that a fact or is that a little false? Uh, it's a fact. Kawhi it Leonard, is. yeah. I do. And, and so, so what do you see, or what are you trying to do um, that Kawhi Leonard does, obviously, on the floor? Well, the way he just plays both ends of the floor, you know, defense and offense, I think, you know, he's just a really good player. And um, in today's NBA league, it's kind of hard to find, you know, a guy who plays so hard on both right. ends just exactly. all the time. He's, uh, he definitely came into, guy the, too. He came into the league too, sort of thought as a defensive guy, maybe not so polished offensively, and then now we've seen what he does as an MVP. Yeah, candidate. defense creates offense. There you go. Definitely All right, next does. one here with Josh Jackson. Fact or, f fact or fiction here, fact checking. You could have played professional baseball. Fiction. Cool. <laughs> fiction. <laughs> That's fiction. Yeah, go ahead and show the video. Uh, <laughs> we got it. No, 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 you got it. We got it. Yeah, no, got it. <laughs> of you sorry, taking, sorry. taking to the mound here in a Diamondbacks game. Just. It must have been a windy night, Did was it? Did it slip? Did it slip? What happened? In my defense, I've never stood on the mound and threw a baseball Sure, before. sure. Oh. It's different never stepping before. on a mound. <laughs> Much smaller ball compared to a yeah. basketball. Okay. A lot to adjust to. Okay. Fact check in here. You wear number 99. We saw you number 99 here tonight. For Wayne Gretzky. Fiction. That's fiction. So why, why 99? Why 99? 99, uh, I wore it back in high school when I was in about the ninth grade uh, AAU season, and um, that was actually the last number I wore before I wore 11, mm. and uh, I just couldn't wear 11 this year, so I was like, all right, I'm going to just wear 99. So you like that double digit, same number, at yeah. least, so 99. Yeah. I like it. Not a lot of 99s in NBA history. Uh, right? I mean, yeah, you got a chance to be the best yeah. ever. I mean, George <laughs> Mikan's a tar ball to cross, yeah. but you can get that. Okay, all right, next one here. You spent the entire NBA draft bus taking photos of your baller Rolex. <laughs> Is that a fact? I took maybe about three photos. And three? It, yeah. Mm, we have some three. intel on this. Now, we have sources. Trey Kirby was <laughs> on was that, bus. that bus. Now, look at this watch. I'll tell you again, you, man. Oh, I get man. it, man. When I get a pair of shoes, I want to make sure they look great on the gram. So you got you to you check out You got to get the right sure. picture. You got you to gotta get the right one. <laughs> how, much, uh, how much work did you put into getting your suit, your fit ready for draft night? Um, it took me about maybe a month and a half wow. to actually make a decision on sure. what I was actually going to wear. Putting in some work. Yeah. It's a big night. Those pictures live forever. Yeah, they are. <laughs> How fun was that night, too? Obviously not too long. It was really one fun. You know, definitely one to remember. I think the funnest part was just um, being able to see all my friends, you know, guys who I've, you know, grown up with throughout, you know, middle school to high school and just seeing them succeed and right. myself succeed at the same time. It was really special. Pretty awesome. All right, final one here. Fact checking. Josh Jackson. You've never lost at rock, paper, scissors. Fiction. I've oh, lost. fiction. <laughs> because, I mean, I've right. never lost on camera. If you want to play right now, uh, that's what we're talking about. So, Trey Kirby's the I've best. I've been thinking about this all day. Here we go. Let's do a best of three. All I right. think that's all fair. Right. Right. Okay. One, two, three. Shoot. One, one, two, three, shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, oh all right. Right. Okay. One, one, two, three, shoot. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Swept yeah. him, Trey. He's uh, human. I always throw rock. I always throw rock. I always throw rock. Camera. He's always throwing rock. All right, Josh, we can't thank you enough. Thank we you, it's a summer league tradition. We don't know why, but we get every one of our guests oh. a cake. Oh. And on your cake, <laughs> we put Saxon Jackson. <laughs> Not Action Jackson, Saxon Jackson. I love it. Because of Guys, give it up for yeah. Josh Jackson. Oh, he's into it straight away. How is it? Great. Now that's <laughs> great stuff. sharing it. The fans are chanting Lee for solid play, so you've got to give the fans what they want, man. For a solid play for Summer League. All right, well, here we are going out, and it is TJ Williams. Where are we going? Downstairs? No, it's Cleveland and Milwaukee. Here it is here. TJ will do the beautiful Ooh. bounce pass back door Ooh. to Brandon. Don't Hold call on, me Rich Paul. Well, he does, but only softly. That's all right. That's counts. That's what I call a very <laughs> solid play. Thumbs up <laughs> all around. You're a legend, Lee. You're a living legend. Play of the day. Play, play of, of the day. day. Play of the day. Fred Van Bleet <laughs> with the game winner here. And one. And one! Time ticking down, wraps. Take it here. Top nice take Fred. by Fred Van Game winner. Top take. Oh, Stank and a snarl. Yeah. Fred.